Okay. All right. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't, I don't want to do Zoom comedy anymore. Oh, I mean, really? I will, but it's like, I, I just had a Zoom show where uh, I was just on someone else's show. So it wasn't like our fans. I think we've only done shows for people that like us. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I, so then I, I think I, I just started in with some new stuff and it wasn't really working, but I couldn't, there's, it's really hard to like figure out what the problem is besides not it's lap. A, right. You, it's a new room. Well, uh, is it, is it the joke not working or is, are they muted or, or is there a delay? There's so many fucking potential problems that are out of your control that you can control when you're in front of an audience. Cause you can see what they're doing because they're right in front of you in real time. And um, yeah, so this is an incredibly poor substitute for stand up comedy. I just, I will do them because right. sometimes they're fun, but sometimes it's like, uh, it, it just, it's like, oh my God, this isn't going to work long. Right. I think you just it's described not. an Iowa run from 1994 for me here. <laughs> uh, I agree. I agree. There's, there's, there's times when the gig isn't. Uh, like I did a show yesterday morning, right? Mm -hmm. And someone emailed me and said, that doesn't sound like a Jackie and Lori approved time to do stand-up comedy. <laughs> and I was like, someone in Norway wanted to come to see the show. What do I care <laughs> when it is, you know? And um, cause it's all, and I ended up doing 42 minutes. For how was, many people? Uh, 120. Shit. I know it. And there were many, many things I learned about this gig. First of all, I've learned exactly how much money I'm worth right <laughs> in this moment. Oh, God. Yeah. You mean by how people are Venmoing you or how they're, yeah. you know, what the, the amount is they pick? Yeah. I, I literally, you know, um, like, I literally, I have been lowballing myself for probably... <laughs> a decade and um so which makes me just worry about the future but the thing is is um but so every every show that i've done right there okay there's been financial things that i've had to figure out right mm -hmm. and the first one i did and carmen morales did a, a, a set in front of me and then i paid her and then the next one we all did and right. the first one i did had a two-hour I was like, in two hours, I'm doing a show. And I made $600. The next one was the three of us. And it pulled in approximately, um, well, I made $800. And that, and that had a week's, a, a week's advance, maybe more. And, and, and then, you paid us pretty well as well. And I, right. We, all, we split it. But I, I did 50, 25, 25. And I think I got a grand and you guys each got 500. Something like that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then the one that I did on Thursday morning, uh, I gave it like two or three days and I posted it everywhere because I didn't want to hear about it. You know how like, hey, when are you coming to Denver? And I'm like, I'm in Denver. Remember, <laughs> remember back in the day? <laughs> and uh, so I posted it everywhere. Right. And so... Uh, I made $800 and I paid Brandy Posey. I've decided I'm going to pay a minimum of 50 bucks for the opener if they're just doing 10. Cool. And, or, or 10%, 10%, um, at least 50 bucks or 10%, whichever is greater. And then maxing out at 200 for the opener. Cause it That's, seems uh, fair. Very fair. Okay. But so um, I, I, I think I ended up giving her like, uh, I think it was a hundred bucks or something like that. So, or 80 bucks. And, um, and so I'm, what I learned was that I'm worth that amount of money. Like that's the, I mean, I, I don't know if I could do it every day. Right. First of all, I don't all, I don't want to produce it every day. Yeah. That's right, the right. other thing. Yes. What a pain in the ass. Yeah. I mean. So who was, who was working the, uh, door? The door? Was it Andy? Yeah. So okay. yeah, yeah, and Andy, uh, as a matter of fact, said, "You know, I didn't get any of my work done today." And I said, <laughs> "No, no, you wouldn't have." But we both made eight hundred dollars, <laughs> so <laughs> we had to go with that. And um, 
And this so, is all voluntary Venmo, Venmo money, or are you charging for tickets? It's, it's voluntary Venmo money. I looked into, because I also talked to my home club, right? So I talked to figure out, because I literally, I had a nightmare. Because uh, I, I was like, well, everybody is doing this now. Everybody who still wants to do stand-up comedy is now doing some version of Instagram, YouTube, um, Facebook Live, you, um, uh, Zoom or Twitch or whatever, right? Yeah. Everyone who still wants to do stand-up comedy in this, in what possibly could be the next six or eight months is, is doing this. And some of those people are monetizing it immediately. There's the word, the fucking monetizing word. Right. Now, so I called my old buddy who I, I've talked to several club owners in the last month and they're all super panicky. Like we all are. Right. Yeah. And I, so I, I, I called Acme and I was like, well, what if we did a show? Cause you and I are doing, we're, we're essentially doing a show with Maria as That's a benefit a, for yeah, flappers. Flap, right, right, right. We're donating whatever money comes into flappers. Right. Cause we want to have clubs at, when this yeah. comes out. Yes. And so I was talking to the guy who owns Acme in Minneapolis and I was like, well, what if Tommy Ryman, Andy Erickson and I, what, I mean, the thing is, is I want him to do, and he has that amazing camera setup at Acme that he yeah. just bought right before this all went down. Oh God. It's a three camera HD setup cost him like 20, 25 grand. <sighs> and, and so when, when I was there in December, Carmen and I hired a guy to do uh, a switchboard and then he put it on a, 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 a terabyte of, of backup. Carmen's got it. She said that the, the, the camera stuff looks amazing. Yeah. It just all needs to be cut together and everything. But so I was talking to Lewis about it and he said, you know, when we get out of this, they're only going to let 50 or 75 people in the clubs, right? They're going to have to be spread out. Right. Anyway. Does he think that's indefinite? Like for, or for until until vaccines know. and is he in some secret club owner reddit where they're trying to figure this shit out you know like <laughs> how are we going to space people and i want there to be a secret reddit oh yeah <laughs> I, I i know there's a chat <laughs> oh yeah yeah i know there's, I know a, there's a facebook club yeah oh is there is is there a club okay yeah i know or there's a, a chat where they page. where they all talk about us yeah it's like we talk about them <laughs> Yes. And, uh, but, uh, but he said, he was talking about the amount of money that he could still, that if he lost just this amount of money, right. And it was an enormous amount of money. It's not my amount of money, so I can't say it. Yeah. Um, but it felt like a, like he had a real prudent reserve. Yeah. And then, but he said, if it's another, whatever amount above that, he doesn't think he'll open. And this is the, his 30th year. He was like, I like a round number. Oh. I like, I don't want to, I don't want to go out at 29. And, right. uh, and he, here's the thing I will say about Acme and about the best club owners. Like, I think that this is true of all the club owners who are scrambling is that they want to be the one that survives. Right? right. And the other thing is, is I think, and, and in Lewis's case, I think he's needed the challenge anyway. You know, he was just kind of, he was kind of going, oh, this is going real well. And uh, <laughs> coasting on his success. <laughs> coasting on his success. Now he's got to reinvent the goddamn wheel. Anyway, so we're going to do, we're going to, uh, me, Tommy, and, and Andy Erickson are going to do a show on Saturday for Acme. And we're going to split the money. But initially, it was going to be that Venmo PayPal thing that I'm just doing for myself. Right. But I was like, that is not. That is not a model, right? How right. is that a model that any club could do? Because he needs to make his nut. He would have to have, he has to do the shows that he would do to some extent, right? Yeah. He could charge a lot less for them because you could charge, like charging $10 for someone to see an hour of stand-up comedy where they don't have to go to a club and spend 40 bucks and then spend 60 bucks on a, on a, on a babysitter and yeah. you know drive and park and and food and bev um that is an enormously fair rate i think you know to charge yeah. 10 bucks for a show sure and and so 
and and Lewis has his his mailing list, and so I want him to take that mailing list, which is enormous, right? He's got a a thirty years of Minneapolis mailing list. Oh, so we're we're talking CompuServe emails, AOL emails, <laughs> right? <laughs> Right, there's going to the be way. some Earthlink. Sure. .net, Earthlink, some yeah. Yahoo. And uh, so, but I think, but he could, I mean, if he could do, even if it's three or four shows a week with different, and he could do Minneapolis comics because so many great comics have come, out, come that have come up through the system. Yeah. And he's going to, I mean, this first one that we're running is is kind of an example and we're all the four of us are going to split the money the club gets a 25 percent, and then everybody else gets 25 percent. Um, unless it's because but i but i want i need him to still be open in january god i know I, there's so many there's so many clubs i need to be open oh my I god need him to be there there's like one club that could revenge close and want to bother me <laughs> <laughs> that's their that's their uh that's what they've earned it for not booking me but everybody else <laughs> needs to stay open <laughs> yes yes someone's got to come up with better software than zoom this is bullshit it's not it's not, <laughs> it's not it doesn't work for stand-up right is are you yeah. guys are you, i'm hearing feedback like i'm hearing is, myself you have your headphones in i do yeah we all do that's weird Okay. That is weird. Yeah, because I noticed that the the when we were doing the commercial the other day, and I just thought it was like, oh, maybe somebody forgot to put headphones in. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Well, well, it'll just drive me nuts. But um, here's the thing: Zoom is, you know, I mean, I'm sure they would admit it themselves. This doesn't work for uh, most of. It's not ideal. No, and and it it, it was kind of like a fledgling little app that people use for conferences, and now it's being it's use it, people are using it to produce late night shows and to produce. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean it just doesn't. Yeah. It's not it's not sufficient for what we need as comics, and I I I wish someone would come up with something. I mean I I don't know how to design an app. Some fucking nerd stand up must know how to design an app out there that can. Oh my god! Save I us. did an hour and a half of tech with patrick brady who does the audio and graduated from film school and did the dork forest thing and he had you know three different programs and he had you know he had a lot of things happen and my head hurt at the end of it and we did an episode of the dork forest with one of his buddies who explained to me get this it'll be in two weeks but um his buddy collects laser discs and mm -hmm. old tech and his buddy actually explained to me how television works <laughs> and fax machines and i was like Pow! i literally my mind was blown by the by the scope of i don't know not just science but also math technology basic electricity how it all works yeah. it's a mysterious world kyle had no no uh, internet today yeah it was terrifying yeah it sounds scary <laughs> So. That makes that makes me want to download a bunch of Netflix shit just in case. <laughs> That's how I would get through this pandemic without internet. I'm, I'm so happy to have uh, to have DVDs, uh, but I yeah. will say this is that um, I, I I tried to watch that Japanese show that you liked. Oh, uh, Jiri Haji. Yeah, I watched mm -hmm. the first three episodes, and it's it's dark and funny and wonderful. But. Oh no! Uh, but I can't. <laughs> but I can't watch. But I'm not much of a binger these days. Oh, I thought you said you tried, and uh, you were gonna. I, I was getting oh, no. ready to I, attack you. Oh, I'm sorry. For and whatever I, and reason I liked you it. gave me. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it turns out. What I, am I supposed to do with all this energy, Jackie? I was ready to punch you in the face. <laughs> Terrible. Did did the boy? Did your young man? Uh, did the boy uh, try either of those comic books I dropped off? The manga. He they're in his stack. He's okay. um he's, he's uh he's in a drawing mode right now. He's not in a looking mode right now. Fair enough. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Uh, we're excited, definitely. Um, thank you. That is great. That he's is creating uh, characters left and right. He's uh he's like I'm a night owl, and I'm like oh, oh, oh <laughs> fuck, it's gonna be a hard reentry into school whenever it opens up because oh my god, I hope he doesn't burn up in a reentry. I don't uh. know. <laughs> he's, He's doing a lot of creating at like one in the morning. And I'm like, oh God, I, I know that feeling. Yeah. 
that's neat wow. though that he is creating yeah that's, that's cool uh, there's been uh there's been some really cool stuff that i've seen i'll say this so i worked on a different i worked on the other 40 minutes so when when we did shows i was working on all that dad stuff mm-hmm. and um and that dad stuff's coming along but i did three mm-hmm. long sets just of that of those of that dad stuff so i decided to work on what i thought was it is more done and it is more done than the dad stuff but there's still there's still great lines to come up with and still but the timing is different with a zoom show it's like doing a big theater where you got to wait for it to hit and come back but you cannot see them and so the timing is so f- <sighs> yeah yeah. it's weird it, you know it's uh it is what it is it's a, f- a fucking band-aid but you know we're still hemorrhaging <laughs> it's not good we're, we're still it's quite wounded <laughs> and wounded it, it, but not down you know it might be a thing where we go back out for a little bit and then come back in again because the coronavirus might be seasonal seasonal se- I'm sorry, I'm hearing myself in the feedback, so it's driving me nuts, but um, oh God. it might recur like in the fall. And uh, I don't know, Jenna Friedman, if you want to follow a comic who's incredibly grim and realistic, um, <laughs> Jenna's really on this COVID-19. Stuff. Man, I love Jenna Friedman, but there's not a chance in hell I would, I would listen to her talk about. She is a dark, dark bird <laughs> uh, as <laughs> far is. as like... <laughs> talk about living in a future that is that is yet to happen Uh, and uh but i yeah because i was really you know i started because i saw everybody has more shows now yeah so i went into the future of oh these are they're not going to book me and uh, (laughs) i i did too i I was like why am i not on these lineups you guys know i'm available oh we're all available and uh but but then i was thinking how you know i'm sort of creating my own mailing list right I'm, I'm creating my own club right atmosphere with my own audience and you know as per usual quite honestly no one is more she thinks she's such a sad sack or su- such a pessimist but maria bamford is sometimes so hopeful almost in the face of reality <laughs> <laughs> i am so happy to be friends with her because i called her up and i was like more people are doing shows there's not good and she was like yeah, I thought they were, aren't we all doing shows? Isn't everyone always doing shows? And I was like, no, it was just you for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was you and Carmen and me and, you know, like six other people. But last night, there was that show I was I, I was talking to you about before that, that Ben, I got a text message in the middle of the night right. from Ben Glebe. Former uh, presidential asking, candidate. Former presidential candidate who was working with Steve Hofstetter who um dunks on uh on hecklers and um <laughs> but this he, youtube the channel two, is amazing jackie it's, it is <laughs> those two gotta give it up to hoff on that god damn you gotta give it up to hoff and the thing is is the and quite honestly the two of them are marketing geniuses yes and so what they've done is they've started sort of a comedy club and they've had I think six or 10 shows, right? Six or seven shows. And they're doing different headliners. And so I get a text from Ben Glebe asking me if I want to work their club, essentially. (laughs) And I was like, yeah, yeah, I do. Is what's the money? When do I, when do I show up? Don't you want to see my bookcase? Uh, (laughs) Whatever, right? And he said, well, do you want to come to the show tonight and see what it looks like and how, because we've got it mostly covered down. And they have it, they have some amazing, like you get this email from them saying that you need a Zoom account to enter, sign up is free and easy, It'll take a few minutes, so please do so early. When you arrive, you'll be in the waiting room, we'll be checking the name of your device against the name you use to get your ticket. So they're oh. obviously using a, a ticket, like an e, uh, in Eventbrite or something. Yeah. So please adjust that name in Zoom when you arrive. Uh, we love laughers, but we could hear everything else too. So please either watch in a quiet environment with headphones or keep your mic off. Have fun. We're making history here and we're happy to have you be a part of it. Cool. And then there's like these directions of how to, you know, like where the menus are and all these things. And I was like, yeah, they're, they're, they're kind of running it really cool. And, mm-hmm. and they're leading New York heavy. I think they're both, 
Even though I think Ben's here, isn't he? Uh, last time I saw him, he was here in LA, but I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter where anyone is to some extent. Hey, do you want to do a, 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 a Max Fun break? Yeah. Sure. 22, 23, 23 minutes? Yeah, it is that. Thank you. Are we back? Mm hmm. So, why didn't we think of this and figure out how to monetize this shit ASAP? Why didn't my brain go into that direction? That's what I would like to know. Because you're, you're, you're not artist. a booker, you're not a club owner, right? And I was. I was talking to I was talking to Andy about it and I'm like there's part of me that's fascinated by the admin part of it you know there's a part of me that the sales part of me is like well I I should just run this stuff and and that part is still interested like I would like to come out of this quarantine with a hundred thousand new fans because sure. I've, and I've got to do the set so many times if we're if I'm not back at a comedy club by December, it means I won't put out an album right. next spring, which is when right. I want to put out an album, and it'll be four years. I mean, I'm not saying the jokes won't be better, but it, because I will be doing these shows, yeah, you know, I'll do Zoom shows just to get the jokes out and work on the the timing and the and the language. But fuck. <sighs> I don't, you know, I don't, yeah, but I don't want to necessarily run a comedy club, but I do want, like, when I called people and said, do you, I, like, I emailed Tiff Stevenson and said, do you want to do a set before me? And she said, yes. And so then I emailed a couple other comics and one of them was like, no, I'm not doing Zoom shows. And then the next person said, I'm not doing a Zoom show at 11 a.m. And I was like, oh, am I making a list? Is there going to be a shit list I'm making? It? <laughs> and uh, did you want to do stand-up comedy or did you not want to do stand-up comedy? <laughs> what part of... Because <laughs> <laughs> it, it makes me feel like I'm, I'm a dork. Uh, but then I remember mm -hmm. that I'm a dork. What do I, you know, what I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fucking care what other people think at yeah. this late date? Fuck off. Oh, sure. So, so, and you picked 11 a.m. because someone from Norway suggested it. <laughs> yes, because of one fan in Norway. Well, I mean, there's probably a whole bunch of other people in Europe, too, that would have. That Yeah. Did they yeah. chime in? I don't know. Yeah, I, I, um, I don't know. It, it was great. A friend of mine from Ireland came. My friend Maureen Fitzpatrick. She was in the room. Um, Are you sure Maureen Fitzpatrick is from Ireland? <laughs> no, she's from Iowa, actually. <laughs> but she retired. She uh, oh, she okay. essentially moved to Ireland with oh, her with her God. EU Polish husband, and then they got divorced, and she stayed. And then he oh, went man. back to Poland and got remarried. It's a great story. It anyway, is. That's I want a Polish husband for a couple of years. I'll tell you something about Bigos. Is that Bigos could take like duct tape and a spool of wire and turn yeah. it into a fucking moped you know because he grew up yeah in they, soviet yeah, yeah. You, you you get those former communist uh guys in their 50s they can fucking do anything yeah he, no they can make, make any soup place. out of anything i don't have to cook ever yeah yeah and then uh so then when her mom retired her mom came there too eileen fitzpatrick yeah. so of course maureen and eileen her mom yeah they blessedly do not live together. How is your mom? Wow, way to, you know what? I was happy for a second thinking of my <laughs> Polish husband to be. <laughs> so sorry. She's, she finally, um, after like a month after being prescribed medication for her diarrhea, she finally, she finally found a cheap version of it that she would buy. Okay. So, uh, so that's, she, that's happening. She just started. Oh. Okay. Like some antibiotics. Um, but I mean, it's, I'm just, I'm like, wait, you, you know, you could have solved this a month ago. You know, right. we're all using the same toilet. There's three people <laughs> in one bathroom and uh, you're constantly in it and she doesn't turn the fan on. So I hear it all, you oh, know, you could have solved yeah. that, but paid a little bit extra a month ago. <laughs> <laughs> what, where are your priorities? Yes. Where? where but hopefully... They? Hopefully it's uh, it, it'll work its magic in the next couple of days. Yeah. So I'm doing Butter Boy, which will be tonight when this oh, comes cool. out. Yeah. 
and they're just five minute spots, but it's uh it looks like it looks like a hell of a lineup i've I'm spacing the names, but uh I think it's gonna be a really good a really good show great and i'm only we're only doing fives. She booked eight comics to do fives man, no new shit <laughs> right right I guess I'm just and not my closer, which is uh, currently nine minutes long <laughs> which is too long but and i forgot a bunch of uh, i forgot a bunch of jokes uh the other day but that's good though because if i'm get, gonna get repeat people you know i mean the thing about doing the zoom shows is that it kind of feels like doing a tv set and so i have this internalized feeling of burning material and uh I don't, I don't think I am. I think people want to hear how the jokes grow and I, do they? I, I'm, I don't I'm know just if talking they myself do down off a ledge. I yeah. don't know either. I, 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 I'm, it's, it's a mystery to me. I mean, I love, I love hearing songs again. Yeah. You know? And I love hearing, well, I don't love hearing anything else, but um <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what people are like. And also is that you got to go, okay, if this person's seen me four times and they've seen this joke, their laugh's going to change. So I, I can't like count on that laugh necessarily as being a true laugh because they know that joke already. So they're not going to laugh at certain parts. And then I'm going to start being going, oh no, they, that part's not working anymore. Well, that, that person's seen that joke, that part of the joke four times so they're not going to laugh again but they'll laugh at the punchline and then that gets too big of a laugh and then it, then it's all imbalanced i don't know right i don't know jackie I, uh, you you don't have the answer is that what i'm hearing i don't have the answer <laughs> <laughs> that's because we're in i think on thursday it felt like stand-up comedy changed exponentially uh as the day progressed things really? were being like thrown at me and and benefits and other comics doing shows and clubs sort of coming out of the woodwork and yeah. and then seattle laughs posted that i was going to be there i think in january or in september in september and i was like oh gutsy stuff you guys okay i really hope I'm so supposed to be mean, there I, in, i'm supposed to be there in march i mean in uh, may oh in may if it's on i'm there <laughs> i don't know how i don't know how we'll do it but uh yeah i'll, I'll well, go up there right so yeah so lewis at acme was talking about how if it's just going to be a small crowd he's like maybe i could sell the 50 75 tickets and then uh project it to the zoom audience and sell tickets to them too and i was like yeah do a two-tiered kind of thing for six months oh just as a way to make enough money to get over the hump you know right right and and I saw Todd Glass is doing a show for Helium. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> oh, is, that, that, then, is that the club that doesn't book us? The that chain is. Oh, that that's remains. good. Well, good. Good for them. Good luck to everybody. Consistent. I hope everyone does well. What was that, Kyle? I said they're consistent. <laughs> <laughs> right. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh, fuck those guys uh, unless they book us yeah um, i always leave room to turn my opinion around oh it's completely. never set in stone i'm i will embrace i embrace everyone who books me i look the other way on a lot of shit when someone books me i remember in what was it had to be 1993 or four after i had started like um getting work at acme um tom hansen said to me because I think he moved me up to headliner in like 94, 95. And he goes, you got funny in the last year, Jackie. Oh my God. And it made, I mean, he is a lucky man not to be a dead person because I could have <laughs> murdered him. But instead, because I'm a comic, I was like, oh, thanks. Thanks. Oh, shucks. <laughs> I've been working so, real hard this year. <laughs> yeah, this is the year that I decided to just do stand up. Yeah. Previously, I was just kind of just throwing shit at the wall. <laughs> hoping it would stick um yeah it was a gray day today gray davis remember that remember that governor yeah didn't they uh, recall him yeah he was recalled and then schwarzenegger I, I, came in i yep, don't know yep who cares who cares should we do <laughs> comic of the week no i think we should do it now though yeah. right yeah yeah it's a 
Athena. So okay. Tiff Stevenson, I, I was like, um, you know, so sometimes I just throw it out to former comics of the week to, to give me some suggestions of, of comics I don't know. Even though I know that there are comics that I love <laughs> that I've yet to make comics of the week because I dropped the ball. Anyway, but she recommended and I watched her set and it was, she was so funny. It was yeah. um, Athena Kugbleno? Kugblena. Kugblena? God. I was so going to just rattle it off like it was no big deal <laughs> and just act like I'm that cool. Uh, Kugblenu. K-U-G-B-L-E-N-U. And yeah. she's from the UK. Uh, Athena is her first name. And she's really funny. And uh, Yeah, I watched two of her sets and both of them super funny. Yeah. And yeah, really definitely. smart, dark. Very smart, and, very and dry. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So go check out her because, you know, now the world is our oyster. We should all right. be watching uh, all the comics possible. <laughs> and then also watch us please uh, please <laughs> yeah, did i tell you that flappers asked me if maria uh thought that uh the the audience should be muted on friday oh yeah i mean they should be and then we can I, I i what i feel like is we should mute everybody and then who's got headphones and who's alone in their house we will raise your hand and we'll unmute you because we can't have all this other sh shit coming in. You can hear everything. You can hear whispers. You can hear someone talking off to the side for a second. You can hear dogs. You can hear all that shit and it's distracting. Right. Yeah. Andy had to uh, mute. Oh, I think he muted. He muted um, one of his friends. He was like, yeah, I don't think he knows where the mic is on his laptop because yeah. he was rustling papers right next to it. And I'm like, yeah. scroll, scroll, mute. And <laughs> it was good. It was good. Um, oh, Zoom is highly inadequate. It's just. <laughs> yeah. It's, so it's, do it with, and, do it with headphones. Yeah. Mute if you're going to do anything behind you. And then, um, and, the, and then Andy just, he takes a, he takes a, a roll of a, a call for hands. Like you yeah. raise the, in, in, under participants, you could raise a virtual blue hand. Yeah. And, um, and sort of the first 15 people, he, he unmutes them. That's perfect. Yeah. And 15 out of 150 or 250, it just, it creates that sense of community that you need to get, and it gets the laughs. Brandy Posey opened for me the other day. Mm -hmm. By the way, did almost 10 minutes on, on the Rona, on, on the virus. Love it. That's great. It was great. And it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't sad sack or angry. It was yeah. just hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Brandy Posey would be. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> she's got an album out. What the hell was the name of that album? Uh, Opinion Cave. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> that was the name. Yeah. She, she, and remember she sold uh, cassettes? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That had a J. I think the, the album's like three or four years old, but... um. She would sell cassette because she opened me at a, for me at Acme. It was uh, me, Brandy, and Jonah. We all did cassettes at basically the same time. Oh, oh cool. and did you have one of those download cards that oh, were yeah. in the? Awesome. Yeah, we had uh, we had some communiques back then about putting that stuff together. I just love that the three of us all had these weird cassettes all released at the same time. It's so. I mean, the only person who still has a cassette player in their car is my dad. <laughs> and, <laughs> It's three gay comedy records to listen to. <laughs> I know it. I should probably send them to him. Um, yeah, the uh, yeah. So she she was really she she did a really great job. Oh, and then I heard about these corporates. I think I was telling you about these, Lori. Mm -hmm. Is that they're just seven minute like break time corporates? <laughs> right, right. For for um, and they'll be Zoom corporates because everybody's working from home. Right, but. They pay okay, but they don't pay. You're just like, they should pay more because nobody's buying anybody a fucking mini muffin, right? You don't have to buy coffee for anybody in the office. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah. Right. So if you're paying, you know, you should pay, and they're only seven minute sets. But if, if you're doing it once a week, you know, and you do three comics, what do you spend on coffee? You know, all of this stuff spend it on comics it's a morale boost right so what's what's the difference for from an audience point of view of of having someone zoom into your house you know versus being able to watch uh, a special on netflix like if you just want comedy done right wouldn't you rather watch it performed in front of a crowd because no 
I think I think that there is an appeal. I mean, I don't know it's for everybody, but so far the feedback I've been getting is what we really miss is this live interaction. Yeah. It's why right. I like doing the podcast with you sitting there in the grass. <laughs> this is live. <laughs> I am in a field. <laughs> You're in a, living an ant's a, life. Of <laughs> giant grass. <laughs> life, yes. And, but I think that there is this draw of, of, of a live show. It has the same draw as a real live, as, a, as an in-person live show. And the fact that like w when someone, when you have it on gallery view and something happens and it draws your attention to it, you're like, what the hell are you doing, man? Yeah, are you the, it, the, it's clearly the, the real appeal of a live show is that something can go wrong. That's why people come to a live show. They want to see, they want to see the something terrifying happen. They want to see you, you have to struggle, you know? Otherwise they could just watch your set on TV, you know? Right. They could just watch right. your YouTube channel or something. Well, I, and I did get an email today from somebody who saw me work on the set on Thursday and said, I can't wait till the album comes out. And I was like, oh my God, thank God, please, <laughs> please listen to the album when it comes out. Yeah. I, because I, you know, again, I feel like I'm burning the material and comedy is so much about surprise. Yeah. But maybe the surprise is, how's, how's she going to tell the joke this time? <laughs> maybe that's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know anymore. I'm at a yeah. loss. I guess I'll, I guess like you, I'll just see how it all plays out. I, I, I wish I was, I wish I wasn't like a passive person like that. I wish I was more taking the lead like Hofstetter or something. I'm going to create my own Zoom channel and monetize this shit. But it's, um, I don't know. That's just not my personality. It doesn't seem to be happening organically. What do you mean? If you're, you're, not, you're not that guy. No, not you're, at all. Yeah, it turns out you're like, I wish I were that guy, except for, oh, it turns out I'm not that guy. Yeah, because I'm not that guy either. I'm just like, I am just, I, I mean, granted, I have been, it is, it has been a, I say with gratitude that I love showing up at a club on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, knowing where I'm staying all week, doing yeah. shows in that club, eating, it's a crapshoot, sure, is the food going to be good? We don't know. But there's going to be food and beverages there. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. I, th there's a standardization that I've gotten used to. And I can, I can change, but I fucking hate change. Who likes change? I hate it. Nope. And um, it's not easy. But I do wonder, like, you're saying with gatekeepers and stuff, like, if comics start going, obviously, we're all going around comedy clubs right now, right? Because there yeah. aren't any comedy clubs. We're not even being, you know, sneaky. We have no choice. We're going right to our audience. We're right. saying, hey, I'm doing a show, log on, yep. you know? Um, that's, that, that, that's, that's brand new. That and, is brand new. You know, who knows how long you keep making money like that, you know? But um, well, it's interesting I mean, that you, you've started. Yeah, and, w and hopefully it'll lead to more and different audience members like it'll expand and expand and expand hopefully but that's why my head hurt on thursday because it felt like the industry was changing in front of my fucking face what, what do you mean like what happened on thursday that well thursday i did the show um and i got like five or six um emails and text messages from different comics uh here you go i'm gonna type it in the in the chat Ooh, uh, and he, this guy also, we've been talking about, you know, the, um, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. So like he, he was okay. one of them Yeah, and he was just like, how do I do zoom comedy? And so I told him, you know, cause you know, it's, well, that's I don't a, wanna... that's a total crowd work guy though. So that's, well, the, he's he got was a asking special, how the crowd got a special problem. Right. He was like, how does the crowd work? And I was telling him your thing with the, with the dog joke. Yeah. You know, looking at the gallery. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and then my thing with the guy blazing up with the, with the giant pot pipe and sort yeah. of lighting up his screen. <laughs> and those are both, I mean, it's possible, right? And you know, everybody's name, right? Yeah. On Zoom? That's true. Right. You could go. Hey, 
Jeremy763. Scare the shit from? out of Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because I think like Todd Glass and Judah Friedlander both do that that entirely crowd crowd work shows these same things. with pardo same with pardo too. same with pardo right um yeah tonight uh somebody when I, I i started doing the dog stuff and some people put their dogs in the screen so it's like get your fucking dogs out of the screen i don't want to see them <laughs> and then i told i called i'm like ezekiel and the person was like ah like they couldn't believe i saw their name and i called it out <laughs> that was fun so so being able to see their name um, and them not knowing you're coming for them is <laughs> that's exciting versus in a crowd they can see you looking at them at least so yeah that's different them not knowing you're coming for them <laughs> yeah. might be the title of this one because <laughs> uh, that's hilarious i know but i because the thing is is i do wish i had the energy to do a show every day you know yeah. And Maria's been doing it probably three or ti- four times a week, and and she's had gotten Carmen Morales to run the run the door for her. Oh, that's great! Because she doesn't have to. You don't have to. The person doesn't actually have to be in the same room with you. Right. Right. You know? Oh, sure. You just yeah. make them the host, or you make them the co-host. Yeah. And then they can they can scroll and figure things out and the whole thing. Yeah. But I, I wish it. I had the energy to do it every day, and Maria was going to do one. I think. Yeah, I think she said, hey, I'm doing one tomorrow, 9 a.m. Because she's got, you know, people in other faraway time zones, too. Right. I mean, the nice thing about being um, Maria, uh, well, it's always nice to have a giant fan base. But, you you know, I feel like I have 17 fans and I don't want to, you know, I think burn them all up in a month. 18, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someone's pregnant. <laughs> um. yeah we'll keep that baby because i need a 19th fan <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i think uh yeah the great thing about being maria is that she does have a lot of fans and they're everywhere but she was going to do this 9 a.m show and then as nighttime came she was like i can't face it i can't face it. <laughs> and then so the next morning she tweeted out she was like it's going to be at 5 p.m <laughs> and uh, so um maybe i'll but try I, one next it's, weekend it, it takes some energy i will say doing a 42 minute set into the television uh, or into uh, my computer everybody was on board right. and, the, and the material is tight enough that it works but it but i do think 30 is good <laughs> 30 is right. plenty right 20 to 30 is perfect and then maybe get another comic or two uh, the one i'm doing on on saturday with tommy and andy erickson Mm -hmm. we're each doing 20s that's perfect that's just enough and i think it's a lot to expect people to hang on and sit in front of the computer the entire time too and just be engaged you know at some point you're like who texted me i mean it's it's hard to stay focused when you're in a comedy club but when you're in your own home full of your own distractions that you've set up right it's even tougher hit mute go get a beer or a soda and then come back I will say this, if you guys want to see Tommy, Andy Erickson, and myself, sign up for Acme Comedy Company's Insider. It's, it's, it's for the Insider mailing list. So if you go to Acme Comedy Company in Minneapolis's uh, website on the upper right-hand side, it says newsletter sign up. And if you sign up for the newsletter, it's easy to get on. It's even easier to get off. So, um, because that's what I did too for my show on Thursday. Oh, you'll, mm-hmm. you'll get the link and you'll get all the information. But um, for my show, I sent out a MailChimp, like an email list. I haven't used my email list this much in the last 20 years. And yet I've always had an email list. <laughs> and so, and I told people to join the email list and that's how they'll find out. And so I've had like a uh, hundred people join oh. in the last week. So just using MailChimp? Yeah. Maybe I'll do that. Do that. Um, the other thing, like, so if the clubs are like limited to 60 or 70 people, are they just going to up the cover charge or, you know, I, I mean, don't if, know. You're, if you're used to 200 people on a Saturday night and, and sold out at 75, how, how are they going to make money? How are they going to make money? I mean, you know, how, how are they going to make money? If people are masked, how are they going to drink during a show? How are they going to eat during a show? You know? Yep. Yep. Oh, there's so many, so many problems. Unless we have intervals like they do in the UK where 
I mean, people bring drinks to their table, but what if we just pause 20 minutes, everyone gets to drink, and then here comes the next comic. It might change the dynamic of shows mm -hmm. if, you know, we, I don't think you expect people to sit for an hour and a half with a mask on and not eat or drink, you know? Right. I mean, I mean, they, they go to theater events, right? But there are intermissions. There are intermissions. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, let's do another break for uh, Max Fun. 48 minutes? Yeah. Yep. I think that, I mean, that, that's the other thing is <clears throat> trying to think that far in advance as to how to make money when, when you're staging back into hanging out with other people again. How, right. But for me, I'm just like, well, how do I earn some sort of living and continue to do my art or what, whatever you want to call this? I call it my art. Because I'm wow. insufferable. You're, you're, anyway, you're quite um, pretentious. <laughs> and, um, but, yeah, in yeah, the the what I'm trying to do is I want I wish I were sort of the visionary, you know, and maybe I mean maybe I am maybe I don't know that I am a, a visionary, huh? Maybe that I am. Yeah, yeah. that's what let's keep let's keep telling ourselves that till we die. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> So what? So do you just have the Friday show with flappers? Uh, I also I'm doing hot tub next Monday. Not oh not, cool. Not the day this drops, but the following Monday. Okay. Uh, I'm doing Kate Willett show uh, on a a, sa a future Saturday. Nice. Um, and then maybe I'll just throw one of my own. I don't know. Throw one of your own. If you need help, I'll I'll run I'll run the door. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll run the door if you want, and because um, it's it'll be good to have a secondary, you know. Yeah, it's good to have. You need a second pair of eyes. We're gonna um, Andy and I are gonna run a show this week with some of the staff from Acme mm -hmm. to sort of show them how to do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. Because I don't I I I don't want to go into the comedy club business with uh, Lewis Lee. Though if there was anyone I was going to go into the comedy club business, <laughs> it would be with Lewis Lee because he is uh, if, a better business person than anyone I've met. <laughs> what if like six months from now, Andy Ashcraft is the lead Zoom stand-up comedy right. coordinator <laughs> in the country? <laughs> that would be amazing. Oh it would be amazing. <laughs> um, yeah. I, uh, so he's just gonna we're I'm, but i'm hoping to just because uh initially with with the acme thing i was just gonna do it like mine where i'm like okay so venmo me but they have so many like tens of thousands of people are on their list yeah so i was like Damn. if there's if it's gonna be like that and it, all that money's gonna come to my venmo and my paypal and then i'm gonna have to pay tommy andy erickson and the acme comedy company um, and then I'm going to have to somehow 1099 and call this an exp and I was like, I don't want to. And then I talked to Lewis and his staff and they're like, well, you know, we do have a ticketing program. <laughs> and I was like, let's get that involved. <laughs> so that's where, that's where I'm at with that. Well, maybe but, Lewis yeah. will figure out the model, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good challenge for him. And, and I don't, and if I think anybody's got a, a, an, an opportunity because if you think about it all of the great comics that came out of minneapolis just in the last even before even after i left you know there's mm -hmm. just really big names right now there's tracy ashley and pete lee and uh chad daniels mm -hmm. and um and then there's tommy and andy erickson andy erickson was top five in the last comic standing she was she was great she yeah. is great she is great yeah and then tommy ryman has millions of hits on dry bar wow yeah it's amazing and then um mary mack and tim harmston tim mm -hmm. harmston did letterman that still burns you um <laughs> why drag me into this jackie i think you i think you're you had your own jealousy and you're like no let me put it off on Lori, so i don't look like an <laughs> asshole to my comedy <laughs> scene back home <laughs> like for some reason uh, i just needed i needed something we got uh backyards almost done oh that's exciting yeah it's it really cool. is i'm excited for you here's here's something okay so we've had i'm not gonna name the club 
but there there is a club that <laughs> type right. it in the chat oh well you know what i'm talking about they had a somehow they had a uh show like a, a zoom show lineup and it was all men it's like even on fucking zoom it's all men come on man what the fuck oh my right. god so right, lazy right. it was um, crazy this this also look we all we all need to get our stuff played on serious and they oh, yeah they have a women's channel and oh right <sighs> <laughs> if you guys have Sirius XM, it's station 105. And Which is great. To, yeah. And it, it should run 24-7 all the time. Okay. I, someone posted the logo. The logo, it says, she's so funny, but the yeah. so is over the crossed out word not, as in she's not funny. Oh, and no. that's Hell how they, no. I know. It's just like, no, please. This, this take is from 25 years ago by Christopher Hitchens. He died. He was wrong about the Iraq war. He's wrong about women. Stop fucking referencing him, okay? Please. I'm eating ginger. Um. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. But whatever. I mean, I, I, hope, I hope it stays. I hope it's not just for the month, and I hope they change that logo. It's, it's just... You, you don't have to <clears throat> reference that when you're talking about female comics. You just don't have to reference someone who hates women. No, you don't. And it's, it's, you know, and uh, there's just, there's so many sort of, there's just hacky jokes that, that are, that we, er, everyone thinks of them and they're the first joke you think of. And then think of that as your shitty first draft. Just go back. Yeah. You know, and I know it was only a month, but if, if it gets to stay, yeah, re rework it, you know? Please. Um, just yeah. a giant nipple. What about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what women are known for, giant nipples. <laughs> just an areola. Uh, <laughs> remember that song, Janelle Monet has that get off my areola? I don't um, think I've heard it. It's, well, that wasn't the name of the song, but that was my favorite line in the song. Oh, I see. Great, okay. It was a great lyric. Mm. there's some really funny um there's there's like richard marx remember him from the yes. 80s he's all of a sudden funny on twitter what the hell i know and sane he's <laughs> he's like the anti-ted nugent and uh <laughs> he's doing he's he's doing uh he's doing some vital work you know who uh laura ingram of course is re reprehensible but she has a brother who's a liberal and he can't keeps quote tweeting her and shitting her yes <laughs> he looks like her he's got like that giant neck they, they she has a long neck and he has a where it's like too much neck like and it's, it's no like, fixing a long neck it's, i like the, the image when they watch this uh it's the just, image of the neck is halfway through your head it's, it's a huge <laughs> neck and a head on top and i think long hair would cover it but uh it's a there's a, anyway you, as soon as I saw that neck, I'm like, yeah, that's her brother. That's the only <laughs> neck they've got there. <laughs> that's the other. Did you see that tweet from Martha Stewart who she's sort of keeping her house staff hostage? What do you mean? Is that they're, uh, they're all quarantined together and they never get any days off. <sighs> there was, she was like, she, she told Seth Myers this. Oh my God. And you're like, and then, um, uh, a friend of mine was telling me that they've always hired someone to clean their house. Yes. And so the great thing that their children are learning is how to clean their house. <laughs> and she was like, you know, my kids have never scrubbed a toilet. They've never scrubbed a floor. Guess what? Now they have. Because the bathroom has to get clean. The floor has to get clean. The other thing they could learn is how to live in filth. Now that's the choice I make. <laughs> These floors don't the, get cleaned. <laughs> but I think the children would be very uh, interested in, in, in trying that. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, I, uh, yeah, I insisted, uh, I was like, we have to clean the house. And Andy was like, can you give me a day's notice? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, let's do it on Wednesday. Because um, then this was on Monday. And so Wednesday comes around, I was like, yeah, we got to clean the house. To, it was like, oh, right. And I was like, Come, it's just going to take an hour. We, the house is tiny, right? We have like three rooms. Can't 
Mikey, he's a Zoom consultant. He isn't at time yeah. for your fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. We got to be done, right? I mean, come well, on, Kyle. We're real close here. Got, if you just have an anecdote. More. What was oh your God. favorite favorite show in the 80s? In 1980? Yeah. TV show? One? To watch? No. Stand-up comedy show you performing. Oh. Who um, was the first weird... Oh, you know what? One time in Windsor, California, which is up the five, and I think they just had a terrible fire recently, like in the last two years or something, Windsor. Um, very small town, and um, they had a comedy competition. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we all performed on picnic tables, and I was a finalist. Um, <laughs> and that was a credit for about a year. Uh, and did you win anything? Was there a trinket? No, but I think the mayor was there, uh, and I might have shook a hand or something. <laughs> uh, but, you know, those are the 80s, man. You can have a comedy competition in a park in Windsor, California. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can. You can, uh, I think, I think I might have told you this story. It was like in 1987, I opened for a guy who had a dog, and he'd put talcum powder all over him, and the dog would shake, and he would pretend that it was cocaine. And it, the no. dog was part of his act. <laughs> oh my yeah. god! That guy went to jail for statutory rape in Florida. Uh, wow! <laughs> I forgot that guy's name. He had well, a really nice dog, though. That dog was nice. It was a sheep dog. It was a sheep dog. Yeah, that's um, why it looked so amazing when oh, it was yeah. shake. So, so wait. So it's a forty-five minute set. So when does the dog come on stage? The dog comes on and goes goes off and sits with the best trained dog in the world wait he opens with the dog and then the dog gets off stage and just sits in the audience yeah yeah oh my no, God. Not, not in the audience oh. stage left big <laughs> he we were, i did a theater with him the, this guy oh was my God. theaters yeah. yeah why don't i know oh, i haven't heard of this guy I'll, was he a I'll real stand-up his... or is he like something else some prison h- hybrid probably doesn't help <laughs> what oh the jail uh i think I'll find his name and I'll and I'll text it to you because okay. uh, I can't remember his name, but um, yeah, he was a goof. The person you couldn't remember last week, who who, who pointed out it was Rick Corso? I forget. <laughs> right, it was Rick Corso was so who had the great. Funny. Oh my so god, great. he had, he did a great Italian voice and that whole that whole mocking that whole culture was great. It's so funny. I don't know where he is now. Well, uh, I think uh, he might be quarantined on a cruise ship. <laughs> I don't know that. I think oh we're done. God. Yeah, bye. We're done.